can take. I want to recognize two people hiding behind over here. Please come up. Sanjay and Gajinder from Team Morphogenesis who have been helping us this evening. I want to just make a little sort of on the feet kind of an adjustment. How are you doing, Sonia? Do you want to go? Yeah, you, you. Ask the winner. I'll go by one time. Okay, then I'll just continue the script. You know, they say at the highest form, art is a collaboration between God and the artist. And at that stage, the less the artist does, the better. And I was quite touched by the introduction. Um, I mean, I carried about the work that she's doing. Uh, she's been working on a project called The Language of the Bird. And uh, using one particular shape as an archetype uh, in repetition for invocation and bringing it all together in a form of a whale, a whale which when finally sort of transcended, the whale itself is the divine. So with that, please welcome Amina Ahmed. Good evening, everyone. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I'm, I have a bit of a fever. Um, thank you all for having me here. Um, thank you to Mathan and all the organizers. Um, the work I have here, actually, um, I don't have uh, the final work of the language of the birds. It was presented at, uh, at the summit. But what I'm going to do is just begin with uh, how my process where I began and where I arrived at uh, the language of the birds and making pattern um, as part of my practice. Um, words like uh, Mata and Pita were very important to me. And having learned that Mata means measurement and Pita is pattern, um, really sort of injected me with something that uh, gave me something to run with and I thought this is fantastic it's you know now I know why I want to do this um, because without without pattern and measurement I can't you know I can't make that I can't go from one point to the next and this is how I begin uh, began with practicing sacred geometry and that practice really helped me um, continue with learning how I wanted to take one form and repeat it over and over again um, to give me what it was that I wanted to bring me closer to that center, which is what um, geometry was all about, was starting at the center, going out, and then coming back again to, to the center. Um, mark making, um, using the same shapes over and over again, um, now this is this isn't um, the, the language of the birds, but it still references uh, mark making and the importance of my mark making in my work, um, and repeating the same mark over and over again. These these drawings are uh, drawings of of roots and weeds and trees, and uh, it's the it's the sound that I'm actually drawing. And again, um, I'm using using a mesh method of uh, drawing where I'm I'm again repeating the same marks over and over again. And <laughs> this is actually a funny story because uh, I was I was gardening with the children, and I kept saying, you know, can you hear the sounds that these you know weeds are making? And they said, no, no, we can't hear them. And I was so, uh, you know, I I just couldn't. Um, understand why I was having this reaction until I sat down in front of paper and the most immediate uh, material I could find was a uh, charcoal pencil and I started drawing and I just continued and I, I haven't been able to stop drawing w roots and weeds and whatever I can find and uh, when I when I tell someone that I can actually hear these sounds when I'm really focusing and concentrating, and I really believe that everyone can do that if, uh, you know, if they do listen. Um, but I had to express myself in the form that I knew best, and that was drawing or mark making. I'm going to just quietly go through some of these. And here's the project again. Um, really the beginning of the language of the birds and I've taken this simple shape and the idea of veiling 
um, to build this project um, and we return back to you know a sort of a slide that's in the wrong place but it's as matter um, still repeating itself um, this is the language of the birds now I've taken paper as a material to use for making these marks in the same way that I was using charcoal um, I I didn't want to be limited to just one material here. Um, I just want I wanted to carry on with the idea of mark making. Now this is this is using the idea of the veil, but it, it's the reverse of that the one that you were looking at. So you're looking at it from the front and from the other side when light is um, is shone through it. And I I made light boxes to to give the idea of um, the veil, the layers behind it, and light coming through. So here are some more of them. And again here, I'm, I'm using the idea of layering, and again using the same shape, um, as you can see, to create those layers. Um, the installation, um, this is actually in my studio and a prototype for the installation. It's using the same shape to to give give an idea of that journey, um, actually, I didn't tell you that uh, this the the story is by the 12th century poet um, Feridudin Attar, and sometimes it's called the language of the birds, sometimes it's called the conference of the birds or Manticotair in in Persian, and um, the hoopoe was the the sheikh or the leader that uh, invited everyone to go on this journey with him. And many of the, and the birds are used uh, instead of humans, which was, uh, I think, a lot more fun. But uh, it also helped him with the story that he was writing. Now, he, he, he uses language very, very beautifully and poetically and cleverly. Um, the Simurg is representative of the divine. And in Farsi, Simurg and Simurg is 30 birds. So at the end of the journey, Simurg face Simurg. Um, the 30 birds are facing the divine and realize that the divine was always within them at the end of this journey, that they, uh, they didn't need to make that physical journey in order to arrive and see the divine. This is a closer shot of... Uh, of that um, installation, using using the shape to give give the impression of the the birds or the symbol of the birds. I suppose it's you know it's more it's very difficult to put across a conceptual idea and into this sort of you know. Um, the, you know the physical thing because what you have in your head sometimes doesn't really come out and you're practicing you're trying really hard and this is one one step that I've made and I'm thinking well all right I've done this but now I know what to do next <laughs> you know because you know I see the flaws in it and I see you know although the image the image here looks really great this is um you know, photograph. This is with the light actually inside the paper, and I love the idea of just using using this the same shape the, and paper to to make this um, to make this sort of um, circular movement. Um, and but I, I do it in the same way that I would draw. Um, so I'm using paper in exactly the same manner, and it, I, I find it really exciting just changing my materials to um, to give that idea. It's a um, this it's a, it's in a spiral, and this is what it looks like um, in my studio. I would like it to be a 12 foot um, sculpture, but uh, I don't think I can afford to do that. Here's the close up of it. Again, the idea of a simple shape. This is taking it um, a little, uh, you know, to another medium using uh, ink on paper, and I'm using uh, words again um, to inspire me. And one of the words, uh, the, the, the idea was what what was going through the birds when they were going on this journey towards the divine, 
and how they felt um, to be going on this journey towards their beloved. And uh, so this one was the mere sound of your name. The mere sound of your name, thank you. The mere sound of your name makes my head spin and my heart come out of my mouth. But these are, you know, these are birds and 30 of them with the name circling around their head. And this one is Atash Bajani Man Kar Shore Nigar Hidildar. My heart is on fire with the look of the holder of my heart. This is the birds when they uh, face the divine. This is it. Thank you. Thanks, Amina. Questions on the floor? If you're not frozen yet. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I've been listening to all the struggle that the artists go through, and they're talking about the struggle that goes with the discourse, the interpretation, for spare a thought for the people who have to try and understand art, you know, simple people like me. And there was this couple who decided to go into a museum for the first time to go and study art, and they're sort of shaking with intimidation, you know, about having to understand this art. Fortunately for them, as they're looking at this huge painting, you know, this uh, five characters sitting there, three of them sitting, two of them standing behind them, kind of painted over with some kind of a suit, some black polish, much like that racist comment that somebody threw at Proby's painting. And uh, the only thing that kind of stands out, the guy in the middle, because they're all naked, of course, when the guy in the middle, his penis is all white. And to their rescue comes the curator of the museum, and he says, would you like me to explain this painting to you? And everybody says, no, we'll be so grateful. This young couple is so thrilled. They've got a museum curator actually coming to explain the painting to them. And he talks about how, how the color is a depiction of sort of, you know, the imperial, the colonials, and the, the racist history of color and white penis kind of symbolizing some kind of a position of power that has sort of psychologically held people down. They're thrilled. They would have never known what this painting represented. Of course, as he walks away, a shabby looking guy with a long back comes along and he offers also to explain the painting. And they said, what are you going to explain to us after the curator has spoken to us? So I don't know, but I painted the damn thing. we got a thing or two to say. So he said, well, we'd like to hear what you have to say. He said, you those five blokes over there? They're all, you know, coal mine workers. Guy in the middle with that white thing, he went home for lunch. So, <laughs> so you know, you'll never know what goes on in a painting. That's it. We've shared, uh, you know, that this whole month in operation has got hands who help us. We've also got backbone that supports us. You people have been interacting with a couple of people. Ashish Vadera and Tanya Kohli from Morphogenesis. I don't see Ashish here. Ashish. Shaili from Behind the Palms. 